Inside Football with Coach Phil Curry is brought to you by your local Coca-Cola bottler. You can't beat the feeling. By Golden Flake Snack Food. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. By Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. By Ziegler since 1927. Bring the great taste of Ziegler's home to your family. And by Amsel, with more than 175 banking offices throughout Alabama and Northwest Florida to serve you. And now, Alabama football head coach, Bill Curry. Bryant-Denny Stadium is something that you can't describe unless you've been there. I've looked forward to our first home game in Tuscaloosa for over a year and a half. And uh, having been through it, it was one of the best days of my professional career. And at the same time, it was one of the worst days. The score of the game was about what we would have liked. We were able to defeat a good Vanderbilt team, 44 to 10. It was a total team victory, including the fans, including the environment, including the new stadium. Every aspect of the day was exactly what we would have hoped for. We'll talk about the performance and look at it. But the negative thing that occurred is that we lost uh, two great football players, Bobby Humphrey, has rebroken the foot that he injured last spring. It is not a stress fracture this time, it is a clean break. Gene Jelks tore the anterior cruciate ligament in his knee and surgery is required. We've lost them both for the year. Our response to adversity is the same as it has been since we got here. Our anticipation and expectation of our team's winning will be exactly the same. We expect the next man to step in and do the job regardless of how good the man is that he's replacing and that's exactly the way we'll approach it. Prior to the game, the class of 38, or the 1937 football team, was honored. It was a great privilege to meet these gentlemen who helped establish the incredible Alabama tradition. Philip Doyle, our much improved kicker, steps up and starts the action by drilling the ball into the end zone, forcing Vanderbilt to start on the 20-yard line. Here's Eric Jones, the Heisman Trophy candidate from Vanderbilt, who looks exactly like a Heisman Trophy candidate in their first drive. Excellent throw and catch to Boo Mitchell, who ended up with 10 catches against us this year, two more than a year ago. Our run defense was to be spectacular on this day. Vanderbilt ended up with a net of zero yards rushing, and you can see why. With Van Priest Davis and George Bethune leading the way, we had pressure on the quarterback all day. But he was able to make throws like this to keep the pressure on us throughout the game. That was game to caught that ball for a 34-yard gain, but we were able to stop them, and their fine field goal kicker, Johnny Clark, came on against the win and completed their drive for a three-to-nothing Vanderbilt lead. Here he kicks off to Gene Jelk, the leading kickoff returner in the nation on an average, who does a fine job of running the ball back out to the 26-yard line. We didn't get a thing going on our first drive, and we're forced to punt. We got a break here. Vanderbilt's punt returner doesn't handle the ball well. Stacy Harrison gets a good shot on him, and Steve Webb from over at Holt High School, Coach Clements, comes up with the football in his first game in Tuscaloosa since he played for Coach Woody Clements out at Holt. And a nice play there by Steve. So we get the football and embarrass ourselves on the first drive. Uh, sick to death of us stalling and short yarded. Bobby Humphrey here, who had over 100 yards rushing on the day. Bobby was fine, and if you're concerned about his medical progress <clears throat> coming into this game, the x-rays showed that there was a complete mend. The bone was as if there had been one bone all the time. Excellent throw by Jeff Dunn, who's stepping in and taking over for David Smith. Greg Payne, a nice catch there to get us down close. There's Robert Stewart taking it up the middle. Seven yard gain for the five. Now it looked an awful lot to us as if Bobby had scored on this play. He seemed to cross the end zone line, but we were not given the touchdown. And as we try to go over the top, again, it was ruled that we were met in the backfield, which is just not good enough. And Vanderbilt takes over. Now the reason you go for it in that situation is hopefully so your defense will stuff them at the one-yard line and force the punt out of the end zone, which forces the punt protection to bunch up so that they don't get out and cover well, which gives you the opportunity to do this. As soon as our cameraman located Gene, 
Gene Jelk goes 37 yards, and we end up with a touchdown after all. Excellent blocking. Great running by our great Gene Jelk. So the score goes to 7-3 to three with the extra point. We get to see it on a replay here. See Whammy Ward out there in front, getting in somebody's way a little bit. Gene did a lot of it on his own, take it into the end zone. Tremendous lift to our football team after we had done a poor job on the opening offensive drive. And we get the lead after one quarter. A very lively crowd. Or seven to three. We'll be back to see the second quarter after these messages. It's official. It's summer, all right. Do it. Can't beat it. Let's go. It's coming. It's so real. Everybody go. There's so much more than ever before at Disney World, Mickey's birthday land. For you to see a whole new land of fantasies. Nighttime thrills that light up the sky. All before your very eyes. There's more at Disney World all summer long. At Disney World, there's so much more. We're back now in the second quarter with the football in Vanderbilt territory. Field position was a big factor in this game. Our kicking game has improved tremendously. Almost got this one off for a touchdown. Greg Payne is one of our great leaders. One of the fine leaders I've ever worked with. Showing a little disappointment and not getting away. Here's Bobby almost getting away again. The physical toll is beginning to, to tell up front. One of our stated policies and goals is to have our offensive line wear down the opposition. Here's Larry Rose leading Bobby Humphrey into the end zone. And with the extra point, we are able to take a 14-3 lead. On the replay, you can see excellent blocking here by Sam Atkins. Just excellent. Sam's grown up a lot for us as a red shirt freshman. Let's try to get Larry not to push folks down in the end zone. We hold Vanderbilt and are able to get the ball back. And here's Murray Hill, who's playing his first game in two years. Murray had a tremendous day for us. As our backup tailback, he will now assume the starting tailback role, and I think it's in good hands. Philip Doyle had a big day with three field goals. Here's a 49-yarder through the top of the upright, which brings the score now to 17-3. Here's the only real lapse by our defense all day. Nice play there by Spencer Hammond. Good pressure on Jones. Here's the play. Brian Stutzen did an excellent job filling in. Again, we've got great pressure from Van Poos Davis on the quarterback. Brian can't make the tackle. Just simply didn't wrap up. And here's one of those Vanderbilt things that this offense has been able to do to everybody for the last two years, which is the big play. So now, the game that we were beginning to dominate becomes very much a football game at 17 to 10. Very important that the offense show poise and answer those kinds of things. Howard Cross with excellent concentration on the football, 20 yard gain, 21 yards actually. Here we are at third and five on Vanderbilt's 41. Jeff Dunn doing what he does so well improvisation good catch by marco battle at the 29 yard line here on third and 13 we almost run for the first down on the sprint draw with murray making a good cut 11 yard gain on fourth and two philip comes on and converts for a 39 yard field goal making the score 20 to 10. so we're able to come back and get points on the board after Vanderbilt makes the big play. And that strange thing that announcers love to talk about called momentum swings back ever so slightly in our favor. Keith McCant there having a little trouble staying on side. Excellent throw by Jones to Mitchell. 
We're very concerned that Vanderbilt was able to get a drive going here toward the end of the half. John Mangum makes one of two interceptions. That teach John not to run back toward the end zone. And the half ends with the score 20 to 10. So we go in at the half with a little bit of momentum. A great crowd hoping to come out and play an excellent second half, which we were able to do. And we'll be back to see that after this. A new tradition joins an old one. The Cliff Engel sweater was worn by the head coaches of the last two winning Super Bowl teams and by top professional and college coaches all over the country. Now, the Cliff Engel sweater is available to the alumni and supporters of the University of Alabama for the quality, for the style, for the statement. Cliff Engel sweater. Available at Parisian and Hibbett Sporting Goods stores. second counts, better have a timepiece you can count on. I'm Bill Curry for Bromberg's, a name Alabama has counted on for quality for over 150 years, like their selection of Rolex watches for men and women. A Rolex is not just a timepiece, it's a chronometer, rugged, good-looking, dependable, each rigorously tested by the official Swiss Institute. At Bromberg's, take two full years to pay at prices as low as $50 a month. Bama and Bromberg's, a winning team. Vanderbilt had won the toss, so we had the second half kickoff, and they, I believe, wisely chose to kick the short kick, handled well by John Casimus, who brings it out to the 27-yard line, a nine-yard return. That's where we start. Very, very important how you begin the third quarter. Another thing that I was not happy about. We got a nice play on the first snap. With Jeff throwing the ball again to Greg Payne for a 15-yard gain. And we'll see Bobby with an eight-yard run here, on, again on the sprint draw. But we were not able to sustain a drive to get down for points. And I felt like that would be an important aspect of the game. Instead, we gave the advantage back to Vanderbilt, gave him the football. Here's an excellent play by John Mangum, who had his normal, superb performance at corner. George Bethune comes up with a nice play on the reverse field. In the interview package, you'll be able to hear George talk about this. But he's playing good football for us at the defensive end position. Very proud of George. So we get the ball back. And we pick it up at second and seven at the 28-yard line. Here's William Kent, who's going to be an excellent fullback. Almost breaks this one. That's a 10-yard that's a, a game. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Bobby Humphrey for 11 more. As I said, one of the saddest things about this occasion is the injury to Bobby, but he still rushed for over 100 yards in the game prior to the injury to his foot. The first and goal at the seven, William Kent almost runs it in the end zone, a little disappointed in himself. He'll learn to make that extra lunge and make the score as he gets better at the fullback position. Kevin Turner in motion here, leading Bobby Humphrey along with Robert Stewart. And we score, and with the extra point, Assume a 27-10 lead. On the replay, you can see the pull by John Crew Morgan. That's excellent speed for a 290-pound man leading the sweep. I'm proud of the progress that our offensive line makes each week. Of course, we'll need to continue that as we get into tougher and tougher competition. Again, the defense having pretty much shut down the running game. Eric Jones comes out and continues to go to Boo Mitchell, continues to connect. Bear in mind, we do not play a prevent defense. We don't have that, that sort of thing. We don't understand that animal. We don't want them to complete one. And when they do it, it's not something that we just permit. Lee Osmond with a good there on the next play. Third and seven from the 46. A lot of pressure on Eric Jones. Excellent throw and catch. Jones connects with Barrett again. Here Mike Smith makes another good play. 
Coming in at the free safety position as we had moved Kermit Kendrick out to the corner spot to replace Gene Jelk. Gene having been injured early, early in the game, just after his punt return. Pleased with Mike's performance. Here we get a break. There's a mishandled snap. Tackles made by Greg Gilbert, and we take over an 11-yard loss. Here's Bobby Humphrey from split back. Very same sweep that we normally call, refer to as the cost sweep. There's a seven-yard game. On third and eight, some of the things that we've worked hard to improve upon that had plagued us a year ago, a good throw and catch to convert for the first down. Jeff Dunn to Greg Payne. On second and ten, here's Bobby with good patience behind his blockers. 14-yard gain as the third quarter ends with the score 27 to 10. So we're in pretty much the kind of control we had hoped for as we head into the fourth quarter, which we will see in just a moment. We want the fourth quarter to belong to us. We want to physically dominate the opponent. Here's a clever aspect of our offense that was introduced by Homer Smith. We won't go into detail, but it's a, a mechanism to keep the offense off balance using the snap count. We bog down there, and Jeff Dunn answers the call. I'm sorry, Philip Doyle, obviously, is our place kicker, as you figured out a long time ago. And the score goes to 30 to 10, and a chance for 37 to 10, and Lee Osmond can't hang on to the interception. That's the kind of play we've got to have in the tight football game. Willie Wyatt, a great all-SEC nose guard, makes the sack. Thomas Ram comes up with the football. The penalty flag you saw there was against Vanderbilt, and of course we declined since we were able to come up with the ball. Got a lot of good work from our second offensive line in this game. A lot of folks got to play, and that's, that's awfully good. This is the first group in there now, and you know very well who they are. We've talked about John Fru Morgan, Carol Chapman, Sam Atkins, Larry Rose, and Roger Schultz, along with Howard Cross. You see them work as we... Take it down closer. We're still not the short yardage team that we ought to be. Bobby runs it down to the three, and it's on third down here, a little play action fake. It's been very effective for us, and Jeff hits Howard Cross for the touchdown. The drive was 11 plays. I'm sorry, 11 yards only in three plays, and it brings the score to 37 to 10. You see it's very difficult to defend the run and also the pass on the goal line. Sometimes when it looks so bad, and we're being stonewalled in the running game, it's because they have nine and ten people at the line of scrimmage. So if you're willing to throw the ball in short yardage, you can score virtually every time. Phillips gets the ball through the end zone, out of it. A very important dimension, the improvement of our kicking game. Here we see George Bethune with another good play. A sack of Gromos, the backup quarterback for Vanderbilt. Eric Jones back in the game doing what he does so well, which is to throw the ball to Boo Mitchell. And they'll have a 22-yard game here, coming off their goal line. Almost impossible to cover against a perfect throw and a perfect catch. But when you live by the passing game, and we're able to stop the run the way we were against Vanderbilt, sooner or later you're going to make a mistake. And when that happens, hopefully this happens. John Mangum with his second interception at the 50-yard line. Vince Sutton in the football game now. And as I said, a lot of our young offensive linemen getting to play. David Lenore, who was a defensive starter for us a year ago. Vince Strickland got in the game. We have Chris Robinette. Mike Zuga got in there, although he injured an ankle. We think he'll be okay. Trent Patterson. Here's a very fine throw by Vince Sutton. To a young man that's going to be an outstanding receiver for us, Craig Sanderson up from up in Hamilton. Craig makes a, an excellent catch. Here's Vince, another good throwing catch, Gene Newberry. He's getting a chance to play for the first time in his Alabama career. Here's excellent blocking on the toss sweep, and you see Murray Hill's speed here as he goes down the sideline. We were not trying to run up the score. But when it's there, of course, our backs are going to take it as far as they can. And there's the final, and that's the way it ended, 44 to 10. Just a wonderful victory for our team. I want to thank all the people that 
came to the game, we had over 70,000, I imagine, in 20 years. That'll grow to about 500,000 people that were at this first game, this historic game at the newly renovated Bryant-Denny Stadium. A 44-10 win over this Vanderbilt team is excellent. It was a good overall performance by our team. We appreciate all the folks in the stands who helped us. And to put that in perspective, uh, this is the same team that beat Rutgers who went to Penn State and beat Penn State on the same day that we beat Vanderbilt. So it was an excellent win.